Tourism has always been a major part of Florida's legacy, and St. Lucie County is very much a part of that tradition. But have you explored all that St. Lucie County has to offer? From professional sporting events to pristine waters and secluded environmental preserves, from marine education centers and museums to diverse cultural festivals, St. Lucie County has something for everyone. So join us as we vacation in our own backyard and send you postcards from home. Hello and welcome to Postcards from Home, a show that highlights St. Lucie County's natural and cultural treasures. I'm your host Eric Gill and each month we take a look at some of St. Lucie County's best known parks, museums and nature preserves as well as highlighting some of its best kept secrets. Today we're going to dive into the St. Lucie County Aquarium featuring the Smithsonian Marine Ecosystems exhibit. Located at the foot of the South Causeway Bridge on South Hutchinson Island, this 5200 square foot facility houses six unique aquarium displays that accurately reflect the habitats found inside the Indian River Lagoon and surrounding coastal waters. With more than 8,000 gallons of marine life, the St. Lucie County Aquarium gives you a chance to see what's underneath the water's surface without getting wet. So let's go meet Kristen Ryan, marine biology educator with the Smithsonian staff here at the St. Lucie County Aquarium, who will tell us more about this underwater world. Well, Chris, thanks for having us here at the, which is now the aquarium, the yes. St. Lucie County Aquarium featuring the Smithsonian's Marine Ecosystems exhibit. That's correct. Great. Well, we've been here a few times in the past, and particularly because it's my favorite attraction in St. Lucie County, as well as my children's, but as yes. you all know, they're, they're <laughs> regulars here. But I did want to come back and touch on um, the fact that the, the name has changed, and uh, you all are celebrating your 10th anniversary this year. That's right. Um, so we opened up in St. Lucie County in August, actually, of 2001. Um, so this is our 10 year anniversary. We're extending the celebration throughout the year and we were very excited that the name change could coincide with that 10 year anniversary. Um, you know, I think we've had some confusion in the public the last several years being called the Marine Center. People knew that we were focused on the oceans but weren't sure if we maybe sold boat parts or things like that. So uh, I think the, the term aquarium is certainly very accurate and representative of what we have here. So Absolutely. we're very happy about that. And I think a lot of that came about because when they were working on A1A, there was a state signs that were just blue, it said aquarium, and that's right. We found a little spike in attendance. We did. It was kind of a, a happy coincidence that the, you know, because of the construction, they wanted people to be able to find our facility, and because of the length of our name, they kind of put aquarium to simplify it. And we had so many people stopping and saying, we had no idea that this was an aquarium. So we felt that was going to be a good move for us. It was. Now we're still working on getting the signs changes. Hopefully, we are. Uh, we know. are. Yes. That's slowly. the problem when you go through a name change. You yep. Gotta, Slow and steady. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Well, and while you said this has been here 10 years, mm -hmm. the history of the Smithsonian here in St. Lucie County goes back really to the 70s. That's true. Um, our scientists have been in the area since the 1970s, um, and people may be familiar also with our research facility that's located right across the street from the aquarium. Um, that is the Smithsonian Marine Station. Now, we are actually a branch of the National Museum of Natural History up in Washington, D.C., and a lot of folks, when they come in, they say, well, are you the same thing as Harbor Branch Oceanographic? Because because of course, you know, we're both marine science facilities who work in the lagoon. And oddly enough, before our scientists had the beautiful facility that they do now, uh, they had the glamorous working conditions of working on a barge on the campus of Harbor Branch. So while we don't have a formal affiliation, we have a long history with one another, many scientific collaborations and great partnerships over the years. So sure. they were based at Harbor Branch before they uh, moved to our current facility on the South Island in 1999. Well, and speaking of collaborations, the county and the Smithsonian staff actually collaborate with this mm -hmm. section of the facility, the public aquarium. That's true. We've had we've been very lucky to have great collaborations over the years. Um, and so when they actually this reef has a great history up to Washington, so that kind of ties into why we are here in the first place. Um, when they decommissioned this exhibit, which had been on display at the Museum of Natural History in 1999, um, the former director at the Marine Station uh, wanted to bring it here to Florida to have its home, which is makes sense because it's a Caribbean habitat. Um, so at that time, they approached St. Lucie County with the opportunity to open this facility. Um, 
that everyone thought it would be a great partnership. So um, as far as this facility goes, the county maintains the building. They're generous enough to pay our maintenance bills, which are substantial. Um, and then the Smithsonian staff are responsible for all of the education programs and the exhibits. So we've been in partnership for more than 10 years, and we're excited to continue that partnership into the future. And, and getting back to, you said this is representative of uh, Caribbean Reef, mm -hmm. that's really the whole uh, focus on the exhibits here is to show locals what they can find underneath the water Absolutely. without having to get wet. Yeah, it's really amazing how many people live right here in Fort Pierce and in St. Lucie County and don't have the opportunity to get out and see our local waterways, let alone the diversity of what's found under the surface. So really our goal here is to display these habitats and not just to display maybe one or two animals that you would see, but really to display them as ecosystems, both the living and non-living aspects of those different habitats um, to just show the great diversity that we have. I mean, even in this tank, you can see all the corals, um, the worms that are living on the corals. There are even fish that dig down in the sand, our little yellowhead jawfish. So it's just remarkable. We're so lucky to live in this beautiful place. So we have um, Indian River Lagoon habitats and then also Atlantic Ocean habitats. And I know later on the show, I think we're going to meet Bill, who is kind of the, he's been here since the building was built. And, yes. And with this exhibit, even in Washington, I think. That's true. Back. So, yep. And I know he, he always says, too, sometimes it's a lot different than, say, going to SeaWorld, mm -hmm. because you may see algae growing on the glass or, you know, because that's, you're trying to really capture what it's like in, in nature. That's right. And a lot of people, when they come in here, um, I think they're more used to seeing the kind of pristine tanks at other places, which are beautiful. Um, but the reality of it is that's just not how those habitats look in nature. So, for example, in our seagrass tank, when you look in there, the walls are cut covered with algae. There's lots of particulate matter floating in the water. And a lot of people actually asked me if we ever clean that tank. So while we do, of course, clean the viewing glass because we want everyone to have a good view, we try to make it realistic. And the way to look at it is if we were taking those things out of the water, we're really removing those animals' food source. So That's it's, it. you know, it's, it's in a... Even I've though seen it, the hermit crabs crawling up the side, eating away. Yep, and so. we have you. If you watch them, we have baby mullet in that tank, and if you watch them, they shake their heads along the seagrass blades. We have sea hares that eat the algae, so I think it really provides an accurate picture of what would be going on in that natural habitat. Sure. If you snorkel right out here, some which mm -hmm. I see some people doing, you'll see yeah. algae growing on the seagrass. Definitely, so. and while it might not be some people's ideas of the most beautiful tank they've ever seen, it certainly provides that accurate picture, and I think it keeps the animals a little bit happier because they're. Able Able to do a lot of the same behaviors that they would do in the wild as well. Sure. Now, do you guys have a count on how many uh, marine animals you have here? Oh gosh. I mean, it has to be definitely in the hundreds, maybe even thousands, because it's just remarkable um, how many tiny little things there are. Because while people may be familiar with what we call the charismatic megafauna, the big things like sea turtles and dolphins that you can see um, in abundance in our area, you know, they're not always as familiar with the little things and those are the things that everything at the top of the food chain really relies on. So that's kind of our focus here is to um, give those little guys the spotlight and sure. let them shine. Sure. And um, you've got a great touch tank here, which mm -hmm. is always, a, and that's one thing too about this place that I think is so special is you can come back month, each month and it's different. Every Definitely. tank's different, everything's changing. Mm -hmm. Our husbandry staff, those are the um, people that this is, you know, this is their investment is taking care of these tanks. Uh, they go out in the water on a very regular basis to catch new specimens. And we have a lot of fishes too here who start up as juveniles. I mean, we have a barracuda who's only this big and we all know that barracuda get a lot larger than that. So um, when, you know, there are things that will outgrow our tanks and need to be replaced with something smaller. Um, so we, they're constantly changing, especially season to season, because the, thing that, the things you see in the lagoon in the summertime are not the same thing as you'll see in the winter and our tanks really reflect those changes and you can have a situation where you have a, a animal or a fish that goes from the seagrass bed which is where you find a juvenile mm -hmm. next to the mangrove tank and then eventually to the to the rock hard rock that's bottom. right so just you know there are animals that spend different stages of their lives in different habitats actually just today in this tank i noticed that we have some little parrot fish who are only about this big that we caught in the seagrass beds just a few weeks ago so okay. you know they're getting a little bigger now so they can be introduced to kind of the big kid habitat sure, so sure. And then eventually do they get let back go in the ocean when they get to a certain size? Some of them do, although we're very careful about that, of course, because we have some things uh, in the coral reef here, for example, that we do purchase. Um, okay. We work specifically, we have partnerships with some dealers um, because there are not things that we would find locally. So, of course, sure. if we introduce a local caught animal into this tank, 
We would never release it. We're very conscientious about that because, you know, of course, if you have tanks in your house, it's best to keep those isolated from the things in the wild. Yeah. Um, so we have par we have partnerships with other aquariums as well that we might donate some uh, specimens to them or um, have a reciprocal agreement where we'll kind of trade animals so that they can have a new home. It's more sure. appropriate. Yeah, because the size are roughly about 5,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. You've probably got about 8,000 gallons of tank. So yeah. it, this is the largest tank here. It is. It isn't like, you know, you've got room to hide that nurse shark here. <laughs> exactly. And a lot of people, especially school groups that we have come in, the kids, when I say, well, what do you think you'll see when you come inside? We hear a shark, we hear a sea turtle and manatee. Yeah. Um, and the first thing I ask them when they come in the building is, well, now that you've been here, do you think it's a good idea for us to keep those things? And of course they say no, because we all know that every living thing needs to have a certain amount of space to live and we just can't give them what they need. So we think it's best that they have another home. Yeah. Now, and one of the unique things too that you have that's always changing is the lab window. Mm -hmm. um, that's a place where I've seen um, some exotic fish like lionfish or mm -hmm. giant hermit crab. They're not exotic, but Quite certainly large. bizarre. You know? <laughs> yes. Do you have people come in with a bucket and say, what is this? And Sometimes we do, um, and we're, we'll get a lot of people also who will bring pictures of things they've seen at the beach and say, well, I found this brown thing about this big, and we'll try our best to help people identify those. Um, but we really leave it to our husbandry staff to do the collecting for the specimens that we need here um, sure. because they're very um, trained in the handling protocol and different aspects of that. So yeah. we do try to highlight things like that giant hermit crab, but of course we wouldn't want to add to a tank like this because we would lose about half our specimens yeah. because of their eating habits. So. I want to encourage people to bring fish here but right. you guys are pictures are a great way to uh, get your questions answered definitely right? yep we're, we're always happy to help because you know all of us who work here we're very you know invested in the in the environment we love to spend time outside so of course we're happy to help people who would have questions sure yep. now what about uh, volunteer the need for volunteers or interns I know I've seen a lot of young high school college kids and that's right there's a high school that has a partnership now with the uh, Har with Harbor Branch mm -hmm. you all have a intern uh, ability? Within? We have a great need for volunteers and interns. Um, so we, we utilize volunteers kind of in two main capacities. Uh, the first is what we call our aquarium interpreters. And those are people who do work on the floor. They help people at the touch tank. They'll answer questions about the tanks. And there's no training necessary. We're happy to provide all the information that people would need. So it's also a great learning experience, I hope, for our volunteers. Um, and then if you're 18 or older, you could actually have the opportunity to work in the laboratory with helping to take care of all the tanks that we have here. So it's a big responsibility. It requires a, a lot of attention to detail because, you know, um, this is something that we're all very invested in. So we want to make sure that they're well taken care of. You don't want to feed them brine shrimp when they're supposed to get salmon. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, they eat pretty well, as you've yeah, probably I'm, seen I'm, before. Yes, I've seen, I've taken the backstage tour. Yeah. yeah. And, and is there an opportunity to, uh, to intern across the street as well? We have a limited number of volunteers and interns who have worked over there. Um, it really depends on what researchers we have at the moment and what their needs are. Um, for example, this time of the year is not great um, in the summertime because we have a lot of people who are leaving to go do field research, spend you know a month in the Keys, a month in Belize, rough yeah. things like yeah. that. Um, but there might be other sometimes of the year that we could use assistance. So um, I'm actually the volunteer coordinator, so it's best to just contact me and see if there's a need at the moment. Okay. And you mentioned that the Smithsonian staff is the one in charge of the programming. Mm -hmm. What type of program do you offer here other than just allowing people to come in and look at the exhibits? Sure. I mean, well, you know, we get a lot of visitors just through that public aspect of things, but we have a very large number of schools who will come to us for field trip programs throughout the year, um, anywhere from here in St. Lucie County, people from South Florida, people from Central Florida, even people from around the country um, who have come here for education programs. And we offer both indoor components. Sometimes we'll even take the kids out into the water to go seining which is great because that's, again, the way that we capture a lot of our specimens to keep in here. So that's a lot of fun to get the kids out in the water. Um, and then we'll also offer different programming throughout the year. We offer summer camps. Um, we'll do family programs during the year. We have large public celebrations for World Ocean Day, and we have an open house at the research facility. Um, so the best way to keep caught up on that, I would say, is to check our website. We always have an events calendar up so people can find out the most current way to get involved or to visit us. And I know you guys are on Facebook now, too. Yeah, we have a posting Facebook. Posting videos and yep. photos. We have a Twitter, very active Twitter, Facebook, and a YouTube channel as well. So people, um, even if you're planning a visit, that's a great way to take a look there and see what you can um, expect during your visit or even to see the little videos of kind of, you know, things that aren't so obvious that you might not get the chance to see during your visit. So it kind of gives you a little bit more in-depth look at what we have. Sure, because that lobster might be hiding 
in the ledge yes. when you get here instead of I hanging know it. out. Yeah, so. we do have a lot of hiding places, so you never you never know on a daily basis what you'll see. Now, for those that don't know, uh, what are the general hours of operation 